In this tutorial, I just want to discuss uh, some new options and features we've added in the uh, CAD overlay um, uh, edition for Sidewinders. So uh, if you're not familiar with this, uh, essentially under the vertical profile, there's this tab CAD overlay. And I actually made a video when we first released it. Uh, you can look at that on YouTube or in your t video tutorials directory uh, that talks about all the features and using it. Uh, I'm not going to regurgitate all that. I just want to talk about some of the new things we've added. Um, so um, essentially we've added, uh, you can now add, import three different drawings. Um, so there's option one, two, and three. Uh, and in addition to previously you could import a DWG or a DFX file, you can now import a PDF file um, or actually image files, bitmaps, PNGs, JPEGs, uh, that sort of stuff. Um, so uh, just coming back to um, uh, this is just a, a, a DWG DFX. Uh, pretty much most of it's all the same. We've added a few uh, nice features. In fact, let me just uh, let me just make a new file. Um, in fact, let me just go ahead and open. I'll just open up one of something like this. So I've got a little demo conveyor in here. So this was just the demo example conveyor here. Um, but if I go into our CAD overlay and I'm going to make this, I'm going to just change the size of this just so you guys can see uh, the screen a little bit better. Um, but I'll go ahead and I'll bring in, um, let's bring in, oh, let's just bring that in. So this is a pretty big CAD file. Um, but this will be nice to show some of these new features. So we're currently reading in that CAD file, and it's basically converting the entire CAD file into uh, uh, a line element. So we can see that it brought it in. It's not really in the right position, uh, may not be scaled correctly, uh, that sort of stuff. If I actually zoom in here, um, again, let's just say, for example, we wanted to overlay this head um, profile here. Um, now we could have in AutoCAD actually uh, done a lot of this work, but uh, just some new options that we've added, such as remove data. If I click this remove data, um, what it lets us to essentially do is draw a box around the area that we want, and it essentially just, when we draw that box, it will delete everything outside of that box. And it's a smart delete. Um, I you know if you do this in CAD and you've got lines going through, it'll either not delete them or delete the whole line. Uh, this, if a line's going through your box, it, it actually just recreates the line or it, it cuts it uh, off where, wherever you draw your, your little wind around there. So that's kind of nice. Um, so that's a nice feature. You can remove data if you've got, um, you know, a drawing with a bunch of stuff on it and you only want one area. Now you can do that in here. Again, you could have did this in AutoCAD. These are just some nice features. Um, this recenter 00, that essentially just takes a drawing. It looks at the limits of the drawing, wherever it's at, and it just recenters it around 00. Um, I know sometimes when you have AutoCAD drawings, they might be scaled and, you know, the 00, zero position can be off in space, so it's kind of hard to find it sometimes. So if you just hit that recenter 00, zero it takes it all, it looks, just looks at the limits of the drawing and it, it centers it around 00, zero, so that's kind of a nice one. Um, so, um, yeah, the recenter, the remove data. Oh, and there's a rotate in here, which lets us uh, essentially rotate around, which in AutoCAD isn't really that useful, but when we bring in PDFs, we'll see how that's kind of a, a slick little option there. So uh, that's really it for that. Um, let's go to a second drawing, and let's load in, in this case, let's load a PDF file. So this uh, PDF file... Um, uh, again, it's a little bit tricky. It depends on how the PDF was created and whatnot. Um, but what what you can do is go ahead and select your PDF. And there are there's a lot of really good online PDF converters that will convert PDFs to DWGs. Um, there's a number of free versions. Uh, this is um, this is actually one that 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 I kind of like. That's now built into Sidewinder. Um, so when we click this PDF, what it actually will do, uh, first it'll ask us, do we want to save uh, the new file? So what this is going to do is take the PDF, actually convert it to a vector uh, DWG format, and then we're going to read that DWG in. And so that intermediate DWG file, we can either keep it um, or just delete it. it it's really up to you. It's kind of nice to keep it because then if you do want to open it in AutoCAD, you certainly can um, um, or can delete it. We'll keep it for this this time. So first thing that it's going to do is is uh, call that and it's going to convert that PDF to a DWG. And like I say, usually it does a pretty good job, but it really depends on what's in the PDF and how it was created and that sort of thing. Um, again, there's a bunch of, of 
third-party uh, PDFs to uh, DWG converters if you want to use them that's just fine but uh, like in this example it uh, converted that really really nicely and brought this in and again this is all now line elements so um, it's very very fast very efficient um, and um, yeah no, this is a great example so for let's say uh, we got a head and a tail here well first let's just rotate it and so you can see why the rotation is quite nice uh, let's zoom in on yeah, let's take the head of this as well. So there's our head end. Let's say we just wanted the head of this. I could go ahead and do our little remove data option here, and we'll say, hey, get rid of everything outside of that. There we go. Um, I can right click and I can uh, move my head to the head pulley location. We did add some buttons up here that are always just here, which do the exact same thing. Head and tail are exactly the same as going into the CAD AO overlay. I didn't put selected ele element location on there uh, just because that one's uh, a little bit less used. You can still get to it by right clicking. But if I just say my head position is right there, we'll reset this. Let's zoom in to right there. And, um, you know, there we go. Clearly, we now need to scale this and whatnot, which brings up another new feature, which is quite nice. So if I come down here and I look, uh, we know that this happens to be 20 meters. So previously, you needed to know what the, the drawing, uh, the CAD drawing scale was, which isn't a bad thing. And, you know, usually if you got an AutoCAD, uh, the DWG or DFX, you usually know what the scaling is. But with the PDF, that's uh, not quite so easy. Um, so we actually added a little button here to just say set scale. So I can click this little set scale. It's going to ask you for two points and then we'll enter that distance. So for example, in this case, I know that the distance between that point and that point should be 20 meters. So if I do that and reset, it just rescaled the drawing. It came up with a scale. So the original drawing scale, um, that was what the original drawing scale is. So if we uh, inverse that to, uh, to set that distance, that should be 20 meters. And I guess I can check that if I really want. Uh, kind of a neat little trick is I'll just say, give me my tail position. I'm going to put the tail right there. And now if I zoom in, and I just did that so that when I zoom in, my zero, zero of my tail is right there. And we can see uh, 20 meters is right there. So that's just kind of a nice little check to make sure you scaled your, your drawing correctly. Um, but in this case, this really was my head pulley position. I know I got the drawing right. I can now click my head. And I'm ignoring all those little helpful uh, tooltip windows uh, that just tell you what's going on. But yeah, you just click on that. And now we can move the drawing around to match it. So um, that's really slick. Again, we can now uh, directly import uh, uh, PDF files. Um, well, it actually is a conversion that converts the PDF to a DWG, but then bring them in, which is really nice. Um, and uh, the final option that we've added is the ability to come down here. So again, AutoCAD, PDFs, or photo files. So this can be a, a PNG, a bitmap, a JPEG, uh, whatnot. If you just have a drawing, I know this is quite common as well. Uh, somebody scanned this in and sent you the drawings or whatever, and you don't have it in any kind of vector format, but you just have it as a as a, uh, a image file. And uh, there is some software out there. There's a lot of third-party packages, again, that will take picture files and they will vectorize it and whatnot. Um, in this case, we essentially just take the drawing itself. And what I do is I actually take that image and I properly scale it uh, to the limits of this window, um, which is a little bit tricky, um, but it seems to work really well. Um, and again, we have a scale factor here. If we, if we know that scale, we can enter it. Um, in this case, I don't know it. Um, and uh, we can come in here and you can see this is just a picture file. I can do that same thing. Uh, that's actually our 20 meters there again. So I can set my scale based off of the picture. And I can go from there to there. And that's 20 meters. And that just corrected the scale to make that distance on my picture 20 meters. So I know that that, that scaling is now it's scaled properly. And of course, all the other commands I can do uh, my head position or put it at the tail or wherever I want to uh, to overlay that drawing. So this is um, yeah, a pretty slick feature that I hope uh, hope you guys like and enjoy. Um, uh, again, we have the option to uh, save everything with the CAD file. Now, it is important to note that the, the image file is not saved as part of the Sidewinder file. It will be saved, um, the, the 
the drawing name in the full file directory will be saved. In fact, if I go ahead and do this, I'll just save this as, um, um, we'll call this test for now. And if I went and made a new file, so test is gone, and now we'll just go ahead and reopen test. Um, so now we just reopen the file. And if I look at that, of course, my first two drawings, which these were actually the, um, you can see how well that's, we only saved the crop part of those. Um, those are all line vector formats. Everything's exactly there. Uh, the image file set is there, but it reloads that that picture that we had, wherever that was located. Now, if you delete that picture, um, uh, or whatever, change that picture. If, you, if, if it's not there, Sidewinder, when you go in to, to load that up, it'll just say, hey, can't find this image anymore. So the the vector stuff, if you if you brought in a PNG or DWG or DFX, whatever, that is embedded in Sidewinder. Uh, image files are not embedded in the Sidewinder SWI file. We're not going to save a picture file because your files could get huge really quickly, which you may not mean to do. Um, and that's not really the point to that. Um, but, um, but yeah, I think uh, hopefully people find this really useful. I know we had uh, uh, a few different users uh, request uh, to be able to read in the, um, the picture formats. So, um, yeah, like I say, hopefully you guys find this useful. And certainly if you have any uh, comments or suggestions, let us know. Oh, one thing I should definitely mention on picture files is you need to use one-to-one -one aspect ratio. So we, the scaling is the same for the X and the Y direction of your image. Um, so if you come into Sidewinder, for example, right here, and I don't use a one-to-one -one vector scaling, and I reset this, um, you know how Sidewinder, you know, can see this is a different scaling. It's not one-to-one. -one. The picture will always still be scaled to one, one-to-one. -one. We don't stretch that uh, vertically uh, to correct for that and I, I don't think we even want to. The point is, is if you're bringing in an image uh, you should be using the one-to-one -one aspect ratio for both uh, both the X and the Y direction for your picture because that's I think generally going to be the case. But again looking for feedback. So, Alright, thanks. Have a good day.